Welcome to Issues That Matter. My guest today is my, my friend, Alan Callenge, and Alan is the head of Student Loan Justice. And for since I'm doing it on a new format, give us an overview of your organization. Yeah, we're the oldest, largest, and in many ways only true grassroots group fighting for student loan justice. We've been around since uh, March 2005, 17 years now. Um, we're fighting for two things. We're fighting, number one, for the return of bankruptcy protections to all student loans. Uh, but more recently, um, since the pandemic, we're calling on the president to cancel all federally owned loans by executive order also. So um, you've had dealings with Biden for many years. Overall, what's your impression of him? Yeah, you know, I followed Biden around Iowa for a year and a half from small town to small town in very small, cozy rooms. Um, I knew that Biden was going to be tough. He's got a very difficult history on student loans where he has sided with the lenders. Uh, in fact, as even as a junior senator in 1976, President Biden deserves some significant credit for removing bankruptcy protections uh, when it first started to happen. And then again, in 2005, he deserves a lion's share of the credit for getting bankruptcy taken away from private student loans. So there's a lot of negative baggage that I could say additionally about President Biden, but suffice it to say, we knew that he was going to be very difficult and uh, he is not disappointing. <laughs> you know, before the election, he was saying some extremely dramatic things like if you earn less than $125,000 a year, went to a public college or HBCU, I will eliminate your student loan debt is what he said. That's almost mm -hmm. verbatim. Um, he also was talking about an across the board $10,000 cancellation. He, he made some very hefty promises. And after the election, he essentially turned 180 degrees and said, no, I will not be doing that. I don't, I don't have the power to do that. It's not going to happen. So he has angered, you know, there's 45 million student loan borrowers in the country, a uh, federal uh, Cynthia. And even before the pandemic, around 38 million of them were losing sleep on their loans. Like 64.3% were not paying at all before the pandemic. Um, and another, I don't know, 17% or so were paying and paying, but their loan balances were going up, not down. So that, that's a lot of people that voted for President Biden on the expectation that he would cancel loans. And not only that, he also promised to uh, fight to return bankruptcy protections to student loans. So he looked really good before the election, but now there is a huge, uh, a unprecedentedly large voting block of very pissed off student loan borrowers. And the Democrats have a big problem on their hands, I would say. So you and I have talked a lot over the years when, when somebody's paying off their loan and they see the balance not go down, but go up. Why? Why is that? You know, um, when you take bankruptcy away from a lending instrument, it's never happened before, except for student loans. When you take statutes of limitations away from a lending instrument, again, to my knowledge, I don't think it's ever happened for any other loan besides student loans. You give the lenders a license to steal. So, um, you know, they'll do everything they can do to inflate a loan with penalties and fees and other nonsense charges, et cetera. Um, uh, and for for this and many other reasons, you know, they throw loans into default, um, often despite the best efforts of the borrowers to maintain their loans in good stead. Um, they play all sorts of games to inflate loans and to keep people on the hook. And obviously, apparently, they've been very successful at it because and these are Betsy DeVos's words, believe it or not, um, not mine. Uh, in 2019, she said that 75% of all loan borrowers were unable to make headway on their loans. But her, in fact, Trump appointee Wayne Johnson, who ran the federal lending program, he told me this was 80% uh, just before the pandemic hit. 
So when four out of five borrowers are either not paying at all or their loan balances are going up, we have a catastrophically failed lending program. You know, and I, go ahead. Go ahead. What does that do to 46 million American people that, with credit? Are all of their credit, is a majority of these people, is their credit rating ruined? Well, I think it varies from borrower to borrower. Certainly those in default are hurt badly. Those with uh, a huge number of late fees and penalties and so forth are hurt. You know, everybody carrying a student loan balance is de facto um, going to take a hit on their credit rating. You know, banks are not going to want to lend a lot of money to somebody who is buried under student loan debt. So, you know, people aren't able to buy houses. They're not able to form businesses. You know, look at like the state of Texas, for example. The people in Texas owe $141 billion in student loan debt, uh, mostly federal. Now, what would happen if we were to rip $141 billion out of the people in Texas who have student loans? Uh, most of them, believe it or not, are Republican or independent. Uh, and that's not just for Texas. That's nationwide. Um, which is an interesting fact that few people realize these are not your elitist liberal borrowers like a lot of people like to think. What would happen if we took $141 billion out of, out of Texas? Similar for Florida. What, what would happen if we took $120 billion out of Florida and sent that money to Washington, D.C.? Uh, $58 billion for uh, um, North Carolina. Um, on and on and on. The numbers are staggering. Uh, th this debt instrument is... Um, beyond anything that anybody could have imagined even 20 years ago. It has gone, price of college, the debt loads have just skyrocketed. This lending system is toast, Cynthia. It's vanishing into a mist of illegitimacy as we speak. So during the um, campaign, on the Democratic side, there were a number of candidates did all of on the Democratic side, did all of them address this issue? Um, most of them tried to. You know, Bernie Sanders was calling for full and total loan cancellation. Elizabeth Warren was calling for up to up to fifty thousand dollar loan cancellation, which, quite frankly, is a, sort of a gimmick. Um, uh, but initially, they were all calling for you know attacks on the wealthy, attacks on this, attacks on that. They all intended to have to pay for this cancellation. And that is just exactly wrong. There's no good reason. You know, the taxpayers, the federal government owns 90% of this debt. They paid for the loans many years ago. There's no good reason to take $1.7 trillion from an additional new money from the taxpayers to, quote unquote, pay for this loan cancellation. The president has all the power he needs to cancel every penny of that $1.7 trillion without needing one dime from the treasury, without needing congressional approval, uh, and without adding even one penny to the national debt. You know, you can't say that about PPP loans or pretty much any of the other stimulus that we saw during the pandemic. Um, so, so the Democrats, uh, uh, thankfully, um, my group started the first petition um, calling for loan cancellation by executive order. Thankfully, Elizabeth Warren embraced that concept. So she and Chuck Schumer um, introduced a, a resolution in the Senate in September 2020, about six months after we started our petition and started getting big. Um, so we're thrilled that at least some of the candidates have um, at least come around on this issue. We are not thrilled, however, with Elizabeth Warren's up to $50,000 language. That's a trick. Um, that's a trick and shame on her for doing that. Um, up to $50,000 could mean anything. And if the Biden administration and the Department of Education have their way, it will come to mean almost nothing for almost everyone. So, uh, Chuck Schumer, when you and I talk, you said that he only had two co-sponsors for his bill, right? Uh, no, we're actually talking about a different bill. Um, so... Maybe the most important thing I'll say today, Cynthia, is that we are not going to see meaningful loan cancellation unless and until we get the threat of bankruptcy returned to the loans. Few people realize this, but 
Joe Biden is not going to meaningfully cancel loans unless the threat of bankruptcy is returned. You know, there's, as I said, probably 40 million people today stressing out in, in very bad shape on their student loans. In an average year, fewer than 1 million people file for bankruptcy for any reason. So when bankruptcy protections are returned to the loans, we're going to see very widespread, um, very meaningful, maybe even total loan cancellation. But it's not going to happen until then. Um, so back to the bill. Uh, yeah, actually, Senator Dick Durbin has a bill in the Senate right now, S-2598. And again, this is the most important legislative thing I'm going to say today. Um, it's a great bill. It's got bipartisan support. Um, Josh Hawley and uh, John Cornyn out of Texas are co-sponsoring the bill, which is a very rare thing because quite for, we're a nonpartisan group, but uh, the Republicans have historically opposed us on this. But I think the Republicans are finally coming around. Uh, the, bill, the bill is very well positioned. You know, Senator Durbin is the chairman of the ju judiciary. Um, the bill doesn't have many co-sponsors, um, but honestly, Cynthia, it really doesn't need any co-sponsors technically. Um, it, so how did the Senate get Josh Holly to sign on? I think that's very interesting. I don't know. That's a very good question for Senator Durbin. Uh, apparently he reached across the aisle and, you know, it's not just Josh Hawley, it's it's John Cornyn, who's really kind of an old school Republican, who I would have every reason to think would would be opposed to us. Um, one thing I will say, this is a little bit more than just a bankruptcy bill. So it returns bankruptcy to federal student loans with a 10 year waiting period, which is good. Not perfect, but good. Um, but the bill also has a reimbursement measure in it where the colleges have to reimburse the government um, up to half of the original amount borrowed in the case of a bankruptcy discharge. Now it's a sliding scale. It will probably come to almost nothing for most colleges, but you know, at least it's something. And I actually agree with the Republicans on this uh, that I think the colleges need to be held a little bit accountable. They've got to have some skin in the game. There's got to be a good reason for the colleges not to overcharge and force their their students to overborrow. Um, you know, I love college education. I think it's a good thing, and etc. But you know, the colleges they have been they have been feasting at the pig's trough <laughs> for many years on this. Uh, to be maybe a little blatant, uh, but uh, yeah, no, I think it's time for the colleges to have a little bit of skin in the game because clearly. They are steering the vast majority of their students wrong at this point. So just recently, Joe Biden had his State of the Union address. There was not word, one word spoken about the student loan debt crisis. <laughs> what was your reaction as you were hearing this speech? Not one word. <laughs> you know, uh, th we are the largest untethered voting bloc in my lifetime in this country. I mean, 45 million student loan borrowers, 40 million of them losing sleep over their loans. And remember, there's an additional um, 10 or 15 million people with private student loans or who are co-signed on them. So that's uh -huh. a six, 60 million person voting bloc. And I think m many of them voted for Biden this last election because of his campaign promises. They are now all pissed off. The The voting bloc is at this point, I'd say, by and large, untethered. And uh, it's a massive electoral uh, victory for whichever party, whichever candidate meaningfully gets their arms around this problem. The Democrats are in a very dangerous position right now, Cynthia, I have to say. Um, we are looking at the hollowing out of their base. You know, it's one thing to say nothing and do nothing, which is what the Republicans have done forever. But it's another thing to to promise one thing and then turn around and just blatantly and brazen, brazenly betray the voters, which is what Biden has done up to this point. Um so Biden's got a lot of explaining to do, and he can't, he cannot ignore this issue. Uh, one interesting thing about that about the State of the Union address was there was a flurry of articles the very next day that focused on that very fact that you mentioned that he never mentioned student loan debt. Mm -hmm. 
And so I think that in itself is pretty noteworthy. Uh, we were quoted in Newsweek, for example, I think CNBC and Business Insider, or maybe Yahoo News also uh, ran articles the very next day about that. And so I, I think that in itself is pretty significant. You know, there's been the, the, the chatter is that, you know, come the next election, Biden not, might not be the nominee of the Democratic Party to run for president. If he is not, and another candidate is, do you think that candidate will be forced to address the student loan debt crisis on the Democratic ticket? I think both candidates, whoever they may be, are going to be forced to address. The, in fact, honestly, Cynthia, that's 2000 or 2024 is so far away. I frankly don't see the lending system even existing in 2024. You know, when and if they decide to um, turn this repayment back on, which I sort of doubt they will do this coming May 1st, although they said they would, um, very few people are going to pay. Like even before the pandemic, almost two thirds of everyone was not paying on their student loans. Mm -hmm. So whenever they try and turn this repayment thing back on, very few people are going to resume paying. I'd be stunned if even 20% uh, resume pain. So this lending system is vanishing into a mist of illegitimacy as we speak. You know, when nobody's paying, is it, does it, is it even really a viable lending system? I don't think so. But, but, but you still have the uh, creditors, you have the <coughs> debt collectors still making phone calls. They make phone calls and phone calls and phone calls. When are they going to stop? Well, um, you know, that's 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 the question. You know, this lending system is essentially dead. It's sort of a dead man walking. This could have a very good, clean, quick death that stimulates the economy, that helps the whatever party makes it happen. Uh, like if Biden were to cancel all federally owned student loans, like, like we've been calling him on to uh, before the election, then I think that will probably lock the Democrats uh, um, supermajority in Congress and uh, maybe even into his next presidency, this could have a very long and painful unwinding. It could have a very dystopian outcome where, um, yeah, the collection companies are, are you know, suing people in civil court and, you know, trying to get their assets, their real property and et cetera. Um, that would be, a, that would have a devastating impact on this country. Um I mean, I don't think it matters because, like I said, very few people were paying before the pandemic. Even fewer still are going to pay whenever they try and turn the lending system back on. But we don't want that messy unwinding. You know, the collection companies are drooling at the prospect of a mass default come May 1st or whenever they decide to try and turn the lending program back on. Um, the one thing that will preclude all that from happening is getting the threat of bankruptcy returned to the borrowers. You know, bankrupt, nobody wants to file for bankruptcy, Cynthia. It's a terrible thing to have to do. Mm -hmm. um, and quite frankly, few people should even have to file when we get the right return. But getting the threat of bankruptcy back on our side, like it is for all other loans, um, that is the key to everything. You know, with the threat of bankruptcy returned, the, call, uh, the Department of Education is going to be forced to cancel loans broadly, widely, very meaningfully. Quite frankly, it may be they may see that it's probably more worth it to simply erase all the loans and start over again with something that works. Um, but whatever follows this lending program, um, the colleges are not going to be allowed to charge as much as they do. People are not going to be borrowing nearly as much, if at all. Um, that's the good outcome that we need. And so I can only urge everybody out there to fight very hard. And in particular, if people out there have Republican senators in their states, call them today and do everything in your power to compel them to stand up against the colleges, against big government, uh, join Josh Hawley and John Cornyn and co-sponsor S2598, or at least voice some support for the bill. As I said, co-sponsors aren't necessarily that important, but um, Republicans should be on our side. This is directly in their wheelhouse. This is the worst big government college enriching monstrosity we've ever seen foisted upon the public. 
And as I said, over half of student loan borrowers in places like Texas, Florida, Ohio, many uh, red states, um, and in fact, nationwide, over half of student loan borrowers are either Republican or independent. So we're seeing some very interesting moves on the Republican side, you know, some very nasty people heretofore, like Madison Cawthorn out of North Carolina, for example. He's always been a, a finger wagger saying, oh, pay your loans, pay your loans. But I think even people like Madison Cawthorn are finally starting to see the truth, um, seeing how badly this federal lending program is hurting his own state, North Carolina, which owes $58 billion in, in student yeah. loans, which is enough to buy every farm in North Carolina, by the way, and still have $20 billion to spare. So I think the Republicans are finally coming around. Um, uh, and I, I hope and think that will continue. So... When, when you think about it, Biden, you know, he made his uh, State of the Union speech. He didn't mention student loan at all. Okay, so he's answering to the to big business. He's answering to the banks, right? Yep. And how can he do that and not answer to the <laughs> the 46 million Americans that are struggling. How could anybody in good conscience do something like that? You know, I can't answer for Joe Biden. I can't defend Joe Biden. He has to defend himself. You know, this is really, this is kind of a very, um, very appropriate. It's kind of appropriate that Biden is president, right? Because he, among all sitting elected officials, he bears the most responsibility for creating this problem. So the great question that goes directly back to Joe Biden's character is whether or not he's going to acknowledge the harm that he has caused and whether he's going to do the right thing or whether he's going to do the wrong thing. So far, he's doing the wrong thing. And, uh, you know, maybe the good, maybe the saving grace for Joe Biden is the fact that he is a politician and he does sort of go which way the wind blows. Right. And right now the wind is blowing directly uh, on in our favor. You know, there are 60, 60 million voters in the country are pretty hard forced to stop. And people are finally starting to get more vocal, starting to realize and acknowledge the student loan scam for what it is. People are finally starting to get um, um, more courage to, to cast aside this false sense of shame and guilt and all the stuff that goes along with having these student loans as an individual. And they're realizing the scam for what it is. And so we're eight months away from a, from the midterm elections. Do you think this is going to be a big issue amongst the candidates for Congress? I think it's going to be maybe the number one domestic issue, honestly. Um, it's a very interesting and precarious position the Democrats are in. Joe Biden, they, I think they right now, they're thinking about extending this pause past May 1st and through the end of the year so that they can sort of kick this can down the road past the midterms. But in my opinion, I think the, Demo the Republicans, uh, even notwithstanding this issue, have a very strong wind at their backs, you know, and historically this has been true as well, that the midterms t tend to go to the party out of power. Um, so just extending this repayment pause, it's not going to get, it's not going to get the Democrats enough vote votes to maintain the house and the Senate. Um, they need to do far more than that. You know, my, if I had to guess, I'd say Biden may do some sort of fake, up to $50,000 loan cancellation gimmick. But again, I think people are, people are wise to this, this scam at this point. I don't think even a, you know, $10,000 across the board cancellation. I don't think that's going to win the Democrats many votes, probably not enough to get them to, to retain their power, their supermajority. Quite frankly, if the Democrats were smart, they would recognize this failed lending scam for what it is. And, you know, I like to say Joe Biden, well, and before the midterms, if they want to have any hope of uh, retaining their majorities, um, and even then there's kind of a headwind, because I'm telling you, the Republicans are looking very strong. I mean, there's a lot of pissed off people out there, and uh, we've seen how that typically goes. But, you know, Joe Biden, Joe Biden can spend the next three years pretending that this lending system is viable, 
and there's no way he <laughs> no way he'll have a chance him or Kamala whoever runs for president next time no way they'll win um so when and uh, that's just the reality right after the uh presidential election and he took office and the people who voted for him who who have student debt what did they tell you were they really angry oh they're livid they 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 voted for joe in the strong expectation that he would at least you know cancel this ten thousand dollars that he was promising but you know even then i don't know if it would have been a big deal but you know even breaking that very nominal promise people are just people are just outraged um lifelong we have lifelong democrats died in the world democrats on our group while they may not ever vote for a republican they have said vociferously that they will not vote for the democrats they will stay home before they vote mm -hmm. for the democrats so if in our final minutes alan give your uh, your tell everybody about your group and how they can join yeah, you know, um, we're a we're a huge uh, at this point, pretty huge, one point two mil two million members. Uh, the best thing anybody can do right now is number one, sign our petition, which is change.org slash cancel student loans. Um, and from there, just come to our website, studentloanjustice.org. I would urge everybody to read our most recent articles. Uh, so that's studentloanjustice.medium.com. Anybody reading the past five articles? Uh, carefully, they will know every most of what I know and be a very fine student loan justice warrior. We need their help. You know, this is their problem. These are their, their loans, this is their livelihood at stake. And, um, you know, I've, I've seen firsthand over 17 years that unless and until everybody does their part to pitch in for this fight, um, that's the only way we're going to win. So we've never been in a better position. Um, Come to studentloanjustice.org and help out. Join your state chapter. There's a million things that um, that we need you for. Alan, we shall talk again. So you've been listening and watching Alan College, and this is Issues That Matter. I'm Cynthia Pooler. So goodbye for now, and we'll talk again. Thanks, Alan. Nice to see you, Cynthia.